Hi there, this is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today I'm going to teach you how to build what might be the most complex model I've ever created. No, it's not a replacement part for my automobile. No, it's not an elaborate new mechanical device. It's a toy. And in fact, it's a very simple toy. It's a marble maze where the goal is to manipulate the marble into the center. Now, what's interesting about this design that I'm going to produce in pre FreeCAD is it's almost completely parametrically driven. You can go into the design and enter a new value for the size of the marble and the design will properly scale. In order to do that, I need to teach you some more about using spreadsheets in FreeCAD, some additional types of constraints, about how to position sketches on a plane, not at the origin, and why when sketching, centering your model around the origin and tying dimensions to the origin will make your life easier. So if you're interested in creating fun new toys, then stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see the computer a bit more clearly. But before we continue with the lesson, I want to urge you to subscribe to the channel because that helps me out with YouTube. In addition, I need to give a shout out to one of the drvax.forum.com users, a very active user that goes by the name of G-E-I-T, which is his nickname. I believe it's pronounced Geit. Um, it's a German nickname that comes from the German word for guide. And Geit showed me some very interesting techniques when I uploaded an early version of this model and really pushed me to include a bit more material in this video. So I'd like to give him a shout out. Now, if you don't know what forum.drvax.com is, it's a user community of about a thousand really helpful and kind people that help each other out with various maker challenges. Really remarkable group of people. It's completely free, provided as part of the benefit of the Dr. Vax community, which is once again, why subscribing helps us out because uh, when you subscribe, YouTube will show more of my videos, which helps me support, pay for, hosting of things like forum.drvax.com. If we look here on the screen, I'm going to start by doing something I do at the beginning of each video because it helps my users out a lot. Um, I'm using 0.19, the 0.19 version of FreeCAD, but every version of FreeCAD looks a little bit different when you first load it up, depending on the version and on your computer. So the first thing I always do is arrange my toolbars so I can see the things that are most important to me. So I'm going to go here and select the part design workbench. Now, another important point, this shouldn't be your first FreeCAD video. There's a whole series of videos that I've linked up above on this channel that will help you get started in FreeCAD. So I'm going to rearrange my toolbars by going to the thicker dots. You'll see there are thinner dots, might be hard to see in the video, and thicker dots. Where there are thicker dots, you can drag a toolbar around. Now, once again, if I was back on the start workbench, a workbench being a collection of tools, you won't see all the icons. So I need to go to the part design workbench, and then I wanna make sure all of these icons are visible 
And these icons right here are part of the part design workbench. I'll create a new document by clicking here. Then I'll create a body. This is all old stuff to people that have been using FreeCAD for a long time. I'll create a sketch on my XY on this plane. But before I start modeling, I want to do something a little different. I want to define all of the critical positions in this toy. What's the size of the marble? What's the size of the hole that the marble will fall through? How far apart are these walls? What this, what's the thickness of the walls? And in fact, all of these dimensions are tied to the size of the marble. If I use a ball bearing instead of a marble or maybe a BB, I want these to be closer together. Now, there are a couple different places you could store these values, these parameters. I like to use a spreadsheet. So to create a spreadsheet, I'm going to close this model, go back to the model tab, and up here I'm going to select the spreadsheet workbench, click on this icon to create a new spreadsheet. Now I'm going to double click in there and you'll see the spreadsheet here. So the first thing we need is we need the ball size, okay? Well, mine is 15 millimeters. Okay, simple enough. In order to use a cell from a spreadsheet in your model, you need to right click on that cell, go to properties and create an alias. So we'll call this ball diameter because 15 millimeters is the diameter, not the radius. Now, when you define circles or spheres or other shapes, the round shapes in FreeCAD, you can define them based on a radius or based on a diameter. We're going to use a diameter right now. Now, I need some space on the sides of this ball so that it will work its way around properly. So I'm going to set that space as the ball gap and we're going to make that 2.5 millimeters. Once again, I'm going to define an alias and we'll call that ball gap. Now I need to start defining the actual geometry of the toy. So we have this first center wall. And so we're going to call that center wall. So we'll make that 30 millimeters. Now that's going to be the inside of this wall. Then we'll need a width to get to the outside. So we'll need a wall width and we'll make the wall width two millimeters. Once again, we need to define aliases. Now, we need to define this space here. How big is the track? So, we're going to call that track width. And let's think about that for a moment. It's the size of the ball, the size of the gap. So we're going to define that using a formula. In here we can actually type the aliases we've already defined. So we have the ball diameter plus the ball gap. So that's going to be 17.5 properties here. And we're going to call that track width. So now we could go ahead and define the positions of the other walls. So we could call this wall one and wall one, once again, is going to be a formula. And that's going to be from the center wall plus one wall width, B, 
because the center wall dimension is the inside of this edge, not the outside, plus wall width, plus track width. Let me bring up a version of the spreadsheet um, that I've already produced. So file open. And let's see here. We'll bring up this one. And let's look at the spreadsheet here. So we have the ball diameter. And if I mouse over these, it will actually give me the name. We have the center wall, the ball gap, the hole size. We're going to need to know how large we want these holes to be so the ball will fill through, fall through. And that's gonna be about the size of the track width, maybe slightly smaller. We're going to need a height for the wall, so the wall height. Wall width, we can see here the track diameter, and then each of the additional wall positions. Now let's look at one of these formulas. So we have the center wall plus the track diameter, and in this case, the track diameter, I included all, both the ball, the gap, and the wall width. Now why is it multiplied by two? Well, because I'm going to define these circles using diameters, not radius, and the width of the track, if we look at one width here, that's only on one side. You have the same width on the other side. So you have to add those together in order to get the correct value. What are these numbers down here? Well, if we look at one of these, we'll see it's a center wall plus track diameter. This one is wall one plus the track diameter, wall two plus the track diameter, etc. And I wanted to make sure that they're all the same, that I didn't have an arithmetic error. So I created a check variable. I subtracted one wall from the next one to make sure the sizing is all the same. Now, let's go back and start drawing our model. So I'm gonna create a body, create a sketch, put it on the X, Y on the flat plane. And you'll see here the origin. This is really important. I'm going to do all of my modeling around the origin, and you'll see later that it'll make constraints very easy. So we're gonna start by putting, defining the first wall. So that is the inside of the wall. Now we'll go back to the origin again, and that's the outside of the wall. And now let's dimension these. So I'm gonna to go to the constraint for a circle, and I'm gonna select constraint diameter. And here I'm not going to type in a value. I'm going to click on the FX and I'm going to say spreadsheet. I can just select that dot center wall. Okay. Okay. And you can see we have our 20 millimeter and we can move this dimension around by just clicking on it. 20 millimeter inside wall. So how big is this one? Well, let's dimension that one now. Constrained di diameter. Click on the FX. Spreadsheet. Dot center wall. Plus spreadsheet. Click it here. Dot wall width. Okay, okay, and now we have our first two walls defined right here. So I could come out of this right now. I could close this model. It's fully constrained. I could say pad, and on the pad, instead of manually typing a value, I could click on FX, and I could say spreadsheet dot wall height. Okay. Okay. And we have this center structure. Now I don't have the connecting bridge. I don't have the gap yet, but we'll get there. Now, because this is a parametric modeling environment, I can always go back and continue 
to add to my sketch. So I double clicked on the sketch here. And now we're going to add some more walls. So it's as easy as selecting the wall tool, selecting the next one there, selecting the wall tool, going from the origin, selecting the next one there, that's the second one. Okay, now let's take a look at all of the concentric circles we've created and understand the purposes of these connecting walls. Are they there just to make the game more interesting or are they a requirement of a successful model? Let's see. So if we return to the screen, we'll see we have our circles here. I'm going to select an edge of the model. I'm going to go to tasks. There we go. I'm going to go to tasks and create and click on pad and attempt to pad this model. And I receive an error. What's the cause of this error? Failed to validate broken face. In FreeCAD, when you have a sketch, all of the lines need to touch another line. The sketch has to be contiguous in essence, or enclosed within a contiguous area. So when you then go to pad, if your pad is going to create multiple bodies, multiple separate parts, it's going to fail. The error message will depend on the specific sketch, but in this case, our concentric circles, two circles would work. That'll create a cylinder, but you cannot create a cylinder within a cylinder that's two separate bodies. So let's fix this. I'm going to cancel this pad. I'm going to go back to the model, double click on the sketch, and you can see here I have a sketch with all of the circles and all of the dimensions. If we look at one of these dimensions and click on FX, you'll see here it's using the spreadsheet, the wall four plus wall width, etc. Now, how do I connect these together? Well, the way I'm going to connect these together is by adding these internal sort of walls or bridges. So all I'm gonna do is click on the line segment tool, then click on a edge of one of the circles, click on an edge of the second circle. Then I'm going to do that a second time. One of the circles, edge of the second circle. Now, these are not constrained at all, um, and I'm going to want to make them a certain width. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on both of these line segments, and I'm going to add a parallel constraint. So now they will remain parallel one to the other. Before I move them closer together, while they're still far apart, I need to remove the segments of the circles inside those bridges, so to speak. So there's a tool up here, it's called the trim tool. Trim an edge with respect to the pick position. You can see that also if you go to sketch geometries, trim edge. So I'm gonna select that tool and now I'm gonna click on this edge and this edge and then right click to deselect the tool. Let me zoom in so you can see that. So now you can see that the inside circle has been removed. What I've in essence done is create one of these bridges. But this in this model I printed here, these are different sizes. Let's make them all the same size. So I'm going to take and use a constraint that we haven't used before. Two of the constraints that we use very often are horizontal distance and vertical distance. But you also have a constraint which is just an absolute distance between two points or two lines. Select this point, command or control in the case of Windows, select this point. And now, how far apart do I want those? Well, this is just a wall. So let's click on FX 
spreadsheet dot wall with okay okay and now I'll right click to dismiss that tool pull this out and we'll see that's now two millimeters now I need to do this for each of these individual circles so let me do one more just to give you the idea so I'm going to do this a little quicker here we'll do this edge and oops that edge there and this edge and that edge there we're going to make them parallel we're going to use the trim tool to remove the inside there we go there and there let me click on this point here whoops this point here and command in this point here and add a dimension to it and I'm going to make that spreadsheet dot wall width okay okay and now I can move this around anywhere I want on here and we can make them perpendicular and we could put additional constraints in to constrain that these are perpendicular and that they're a particular place on the rotation and I'll show you an example of that as we start putting holes in walls because the same technique would apply but for right now we'll leave that as that and I have one that we can open up that has all of the walls already defined in it. And you'll notice that this one is extruded. This one is padded because the pad will work successfully now because this is a completely contained sketch which only creates one body. It's a single body because there are places touching everywhere in the body. Okay, now that we have the walls, I'm going to put a base on this. Now, when you watch this, you'll see that perhaps I should put the base on later when it's all finished. It would make things a little easier, but I'm gonna put the base on now because I wanna show you about attachment points, about when you have a plane, how you put a sketch somewhere higher above that plane. And so let's put the base on first, and then we're gonna cut holes in the walls without cutting holes in the plane by using an attachment point. So very simply here, I'm going to go to this body, I'm going to go to tasks, I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY plane. So that sketch is in essence, um, on the bottom, in essence, underneath this diagram. I'm going to have this sketch be a circle. I'm going to give it a dimension. <clears throat> and we're going to give it a dimension using a formula so that we can change it parametrically. So spreadsheet dot wall four. And uh, let's ask, add one millimeter. So it's just a little bit outside the um, existing dimension. Now you'll notice when I just added plus one, there's a unit mismatch. And that's because in the spreadsheet, I've defined the units as millimeters. So here I have to say one millimeter. Okay, okay. I can now close this. I can go back to our model. I can select this sketch, but to see that, I'm going to click on pad walls and hit the space bar to make that not visible. So let's select this right here, and we're going to go to tasks, and we're going to do a pad, and we'll make the base uh, one millimeter should be enough. Okay, this is starting to look like a maze. But once again, we need to now be able to get from this track to this track to this track. How do we move from one to the other? Well, you use a tool to cut 
an opening in the wall. What is a tool? It's just a shape. We have a tool that's the right size. That's the dimension of a hole. To do this, I need another sketch. I need a sketch that basically I can use to create these new shapes that I'm going to use to cut out these openings. So I'm going to click on the body. I'm going to go to tasks, create a sketch on the same base plane. Whoops, I'm losing my marbles here. On the same base plane. So now we're underneath this. Let me go over here to model once again and turn off this pad, but I'm going to turn on the wall sketch by selecting it and clicking space on it. I'm going to make sure that sketch is on. And now I can add some cutouts here. So how do I add a cutout? Well, I'm going to take and create a circle. And we'll just put one right there. And I could have, let's say, a cutout right there. And a cutout right there. So now the ball could go in here, then in here, then in here. And now we need one more cutout. And let's put it right there. Now, how wide do we need these to be? Well, we have that dimension already set because I can go here to constrain diameter and I can put in spreadsheet dot hole. Bang. Now I can also select this circle this one, this one, and this one, and I can say they're all equal. And now they're all dimensioned. So let me go to tasks now and close those. And I have those selected. So let's select one of those edges of that one as an example. Go to tasks and create a pocket. Hmm, I don't see anything here. What's going on? Well, let me try reversing it. Ooh, now it creates a hole underneath. So it seemed like it was okay, but it's probably not the right dimension. So we're going to make it spreadsheet dot wall height. Okay. And now it is properly cutting out, but it's also cutting out the bottom. Well, we want the hole to be going up, not down. So we clicked on reversed. And, but it's too low. So let's click OK for right now and see if we can figure out a way to move it up. So let's go back to that sketch. And you'll notice down here, there's an area called attachment. So it's attached to the XY plane. It's right at the bottom. We have the base also attached at the bottom, extruded a millimeter up. So it's cutting through the base. So we need to move it above the base by one millimeter. So we're gonna click on position, Z. We'll move it one millimeter up. Click out of there, and now you'll see it's no longer cutting through the bottom. We can zoom in here, and you'll see it's properly cutting out the walls using our circle, but not cutting through the bottom. Okay. Now, how do I go, though, and I define exactly where those circles are gonna be because it's sort of important. If I scale this thing up or down, um, I don't want those moving around. Uh, before I do that, let me demonstrate this is actually parametric right now. So I could go back to spreadsheet. I could say the ball diameter is now 20 instead. Oops, 
20 millimeters. So clearly that's bigger now. And you'll notice that the center is not in any way defined by the wall. So let's fix that. So the center wall diameter is defined right now as the wall ball plus five millimeters. Okay. So let's instead say it's the ball times 1.20. We'll make it 20% bigger than the ball. We'll see if that works better. So now let's go back to our model. Ah, and that works a little bit better. So now let's put this back at the ball diameter. Let's set it back to 15 millimeters. Return. And there we're back at our original sketch. So we have a parametric sketch here. We have a sketch where we can change parameters and the sketch will scale properly. But what about the location of these guys? Because if I go here and I click here, these guys um, sort of can move all over. So we need to um, do a couple things. The first thing we need to do is position them in this direction, these holes. So I'm going to take and click here and click command here and put a dimension on that, a length. And once again, we want to use a parameter spreadsheet. That's wall center one, two, three dot wall three. But we don't want it centered on the outside of the wall. We want it centered on the spot halfway inside the wall width. So we could make that plus spreadsheet dot wall width divided by two. And that will position it exactly in the center of the wall. So let's click OK. OK. Whoops. Now, why didn't that work? Well, the wall dimensions are diameters. Diameter is the dimension across the full circle. We want, we're going from the origin, not the opposite side, so we have to divide by two. In essence, we want a radius. So let me take this dimension here, go back to our formula, put this whole thing in parentheses, and divide it by two. There we go. Now, this is staying locked in there. It still can move around the arc. What if we want to fix the position in the arc? Well, we can do that also because we can define an angle. So let's actually draw a line between this point and this circle here, but let's actually extend it out here just to make it a little easier. Now, how do I take this and I constrain it to this line? Well, for that, I use a fix a point onto an object, this item here. I don't use a tangent constraint. That's a little different. So we do that there. And now that line is going to stay locked there. And the length doesn't really matter. So now I can define the angle between this line and this axis. So I can click on this axis and this line, and I can put an angle constraint on it. Let's make it 150. Now I could put this in the spreadsheet. I probably should. For right now, we'll just type a number in. There we go. So let's find that 150 here. Sometimes hard to see. Um, and that you'll see it's 150 degrees from here to here. And I could change that to, let's say, 30. And it moves it over there. I could change it to 60. And it'll move it up here somewhere. Let's actually make it over 90. So let's make it 100. And there we have it right there. This circle, the circle now is green. Why? It's fully constrained. 
so I can't move it in any direction. But if I close this, we'll see there's an air mark. Failed to create a face from a wire in a sketch. Wow, these are really complicated error messages. What that basically means is we broke our sketch because we have this line going off into the middle of nowhere and the pad operation doesn't know what to do with that. So how can we fix that? We'll go back to our sketch and we'll take this line that we used. And let me move this over here so we can see it a little bit better. We'll take this line that we're using for the purposes of just defining the angle and we're gonna change it into a construction line. A construction line is a line used for modeling purposes, for dimension purposes, but it doesn't affect the geometry. So I'm going to select this line here and I'm going to go over here. I always have trouble finding uh, construction lines. Let's see which one it is here. Nope, that's copy. Here we go. Toggle the toolbar or selected geometry to from construction mode. Now it's a construction line. Close and that pocket is now working properly. So we've now fully dimensioned one of our openings and we could do that for all of our openings. Okay. Now let's go and put the holes in the bottom so that this puzzle is a little more exciting. We want holes going through the bottom. Well, to do that, I'm gonna click on body again. I'm gonna to go to tasks. I'm gonna create a new sketch, also on my XY plane. And we know how to make holes already. And this time we're not going to move the attachment point up. We're going to leave it right where it is. So let me go back to my model. Let me turn off this feature. But I do want to leave on this feature because I want us to know where those are. So when I make my holes for things to fall through, they're in reasonable places. If I put them in the wrong places, I might never be able to get between the walls. So all we need to do here now is define some more holes. We'll define one there. And let's see here. We'll define one here. And uh, maybe we'll define one here. You have to think about this a little bit. So the ball starts in this one. It comes in this one. It goes to this one. It goes to this one. Okay, when it goes to this one, why don't we move this to down here? And I'm going to move this one up to over here. So it comes in here. If you go the wrong way, you're going to fall out. And we'll move this one over here. Now, how big should those be? Well, we can dimension the circle using the whole dimension. So let's take and click on one of those circles and do a diameter dimension. And it's going to be spreadsheet that hole. Perfect. And now we can dimension the distance from here, just like we did before using the wall. Um, in this case, we want to subtract half of the track size to get it in the right position. For right now, I'm just going to make these equal and do it by eye, just so we can go ahead and finish up this model. So we're going to make those equal. And then I'm going to eyeball that a little bit there, a little bit there. That looks good. So now we're going to close that sketch, select one of the items in that sketch, go to tasks, do a pocket and make it reversed. And we can see this one is over a little bit too far but you get the idea. Okay, you can see here the final model. This is almost 100% parametrically driven. 
I can change the ball size and the maze will get bigger or smaller. And if I uh, take the time to dimension all of the angles that position the holes and the breaks in the wall, then those will also stay in the same relative positions. Folks, I hope you learned a lot here. If you did, give me a thumbs up, recommend the channel, and I really want to recommend you go to forum.drvax.com because there's an active discussion about this model on the forum. There are almost a thousand people on that forum that are actively helping each other um, and a couple thousand more people um, participate by viewing the forum each month. Thanks again and let's continue to learn things together.